<laughs> Do you, you you mentioned coming off floppy yeah. in that Sacramento game, your very first game. Yeah. Do you do you specifically remember your two first first two baskets of your career? I remember my first one. Okay. My my first basket was coming off a of floppy action, and I faded to the corner by our bench and received the ball over the top and hit a and hit a 17, 18 foot. First of all, it's hilarious that you were running floppy. It's hilarious. On that one. You came off mm-hmm. and took the one dribble baseline, mm-hmm. and C. Booze, after he set the screen, kind of backed up into the pocket around yeah. the elbow. Yep. So there was like space, yeah. a little space. <laughs> On the second one, you came off the other side and curled, and Ricky Davis hit you at the elbow. And I had the screenshot on my phone, and it's Z on the left block, yep. C. C. Booze on the right block, Darius Miles spotting up from about 17 feet. At the right wingish, yeah. but not really space. Not really space. And then Ricky Davis is just standing there at the top of the key. It's like so literally it's about eight all, or nine people. <laughs> yeah, eight or in nine the paint. people, all just right there. Yeah, right there. And then you drove back and hit a little fall away going left. Yeah. When did you start to feel like the spacing was changing in the NBA? Um, you know that's a, that's a good question. I'm, I'm trying to think. I I think the spacing started to change in the NBA. I think, I think Stan Van Gundy had a lot to do with it. You know, now that I think about it, I'm, and I'm thinking because I'm in the, I was in the East, and obviously, um, you know, they, they 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 had a lot of spacing, you know, in Sacramento in the early 2000s, but it it wasn't a lot of spacing. Maybe they just had some shooting. Obviously, Mike Bibb could shoot the ball. You know, uh, you know, Peja was shooting the ball. They ran corner splits. Yeah, they run corner splits. They, you know, yeah. um, you know, Vladi, you know, could play the elbow, could play the corner, could hit the, you know, the three at times. C, uh, you know, see Webb from time to time was spaced a little bit, but he was more in the post. Um, you know, Bobby Jackson would fly off, obviously, for shots. But, you know, I don't, I believe Stan with, 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 with Dwight, you know, kind of in that, that 07, 08, 09 kind of range, they started to change it. A lot, you know. Um, I hadn't seen that much space because I played against the Detroit Pistons, and obviously you have, you know, you have Rip on his floppy down action, you know, flying off the floppy down or the two chests or whatever the case may be. Um, but with Stan, I think he saw what he had in Dwight, and he started to build that team around him to like, I want nothing but space, you know. And we saw that. We saw it when Rashard Lewis got on that team. We saw it when Hedo Turkoglu got there, you know, and then added Jameer. You know, and added just a bunch of space. You as well, <laughs> you as well. Like, took a while. Yeah, you know, it took a while to to, a while. to, to use your, your 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 superpowers. I tell you that. <laughs> it, took it took a while for you to use your superpowers, or them to use your superpowers for the better of the team. But um, you know, um, you know, even where Ray Allen was on Boston, you know, at, in 08, it wasn't. It still wasn't a lot of space out there. KG was posting up. Rondo was not a shooter. Rondo was not a shooter. Tony Allen wasn't a shooter. Right. You know, PP was, was two three, bigs. Yeah, yeah, PP yeah. was a three level score. Um, but they were playing two you know, bigs a lot. Of two time. Bigs a lot. You know, if it was KG and, and Perk or KG and Big Baby or whatever the case may be, you know, Detroit was still playing two bigs even when Ben went to Chicago. You know, they brought in um, they brought in Chris Weber. Um, you know, so they were playing two bigs as well. You know, I feel like you know Miami was still playing two bigs. They was playing Shaq when he was there, with, along with Udonis and, and Zoe when Zoe came back. I feel like the Orlando man. Orlando kind of was the the first. I want to say the first because they're obviously yeah. You know, I think nobody's the, pre, the, the, first, pre, but. the precursor was definitely, in my opinion, the Suns. Right, yeah. the Suns were the first with D'Antoni, with D'Antoni and Steve yeah. Nash, Marion at the four, yeah. Amari at the five. But Marion wasn't spread. he wasn't a spacer either. But he but he was so athletic and yeah, had so yeah, much yeah. speed that he created space. Yes, you know, they're they're, they're we're going to get to this. Their pace. <laughs> they're going to get to this in a second. Yeah, but. It's funny because with the with the magic, yeah, I'm not sure that that was the intention. Now it right. ultimately may have played out that right, way, right, right, right. But Tony Batie hurt his shoulder guarding Dwight in preseason, mm. and uh, we tried Turk at the four right. in in the preseason games, right. and he refused. He's like, "Fuck this, I'm not going. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not, not going, going to fucking for us. <laughs> Fuck this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Richard, as a as a good teammate and a yeah. true professional. I'm like Turk. Um, <laughs> he's like, he's like, fuck it, I'll do it, right? Yeah. And that, and then all of a sudden, it created an advantage. And we ended up playing you guys in 09, the Eastern Conference Finals. And by the way, I played 
nine minutes. Nine minutes, that series. Second quarter, second quarter of game two. But I got to watch some awesome basketball. And it's weird. I've, I've, I've rewatched some of that series. And it is so apparent that no matter what you did, no matter what y'all did, we just had an advantage. Yeah. The whole season, we geared our team up to play Boston. Everything was geared to play Boston. Everything. We, we never practiced anything besides two bigs, a point guard, a small, and a small, small forward, and a shooting guard. And then, fuck, you guys win. <laughs> and it's like, we've geared up all, you know, we had Big Z, Anderson Verjao, myself, Delonte, and Mo Williams. I mean, you guys are out there with Dwight, Rashard, Hedu, Jameer. Beatrice. Beatrice. Courtney Lee. Courtney Lee. You guys are out there with like what the league is to now. Yeah. The league to now is like long wings, shooters, and a guy that can screen, roll, lob. And then you add on even more with Dwight because he could occasionally post up a small. I think, too, you know what? I, looking back on that team that I think was so important, because I talk about this all the time now, Jameer Nelson could shoot threes out of pick and roll. Yeah. It's an important thing. It is a very important thing for many it, reasons. It, first of all, it unlocks everyone's offensive game. If you can shoot threes off the dribble, it unlocks your game. Right? Absolutely. But also just for the offense. Now, all of a sudden, you're forced to make a decision in a Jameer Nelson, Dwight Howard pick and roll. Hedo Turkoglu. Yeah. If you decide to go under him because you don't want him getting to his right hand, you you have to make a decision now. He's going to shoot. He's going to shoot a three. He's going to shoot it. So we would run that angle pick and roll. Yep. We'd have a shooter in the left corner. Yep. Turk uh, going to his right hand. Yep. Dwight Rowland and two shooters. And space. two shooters. Where's the help coming from? And you can't you can't switch it because Dwight's going to bury you, hit you with 19 elbows, and he doesn't care about getting one or two fouls off the elbows. But he's going to dunk you in the rim. This is like super duper man Dwight at the time. I rewatched game five the other day. And uh, I've never watched the series, by the way. You haven't. No. I'm very curious to get your thoughts and what you remember about that series specifically. Because this is what I remember. And I was like, I'm going to go watch. What was the series? 4 2. 4 2. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 4 2. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't talk to the media after game six. I was pissed. <laughs> I was pissed. I took a shower and got shot on the bus. I remember that now. Yeah, I was pissed. Game five, I, I was watching the fourth quarter. Literally your offense, you didn't match up Hunt. For the first part of the, the fourth quarter, you had uh, two bigs mm -hmm. in the dunker spot, either dunker spot. You had Mo or Delante. At one point, it was Wally Zerbiak <laughs> spotting up. Yeah. And you would post up Mikel Petrus at like 19 feet and then try to go one-on-one. -on -one. It was really interesting to watch that versus spread, pick, and roll with shooting and spacing. Yeah, it was like, really interesting. Like, and by the way, how the fuck is by, he functioning with this? By the way, I'm, this, is not, this is not like a knock on Mike Brown at all. Right. Like, I'm not saying that. It was just what we were doing was so different at the time. Yeah. And it wasn't like the next year everybody's like, oh, we're going to try to emulate what Orlando did. Right. 2011, I'll never forget this game. We played against the Minnesota Timberwolves in our new arena. And that's when we had Ryan Anderson and Richard. And we would get to our spread pick and roll. And it didn't matter where Ryan or Richard was. They would tag Dwight with Kevin Love, the four man. No matter where he was. No matter where he was. So if he's the high guy. He's taking him all the way to the rim. On the double side, they're, they're tagging him at the rim. And Ryan and Richard are just sitting there teeing him up. It's bizarre. It's super bizarre. I'm not going to gas you up. I'm not going to gas you up. I'm going to say one thing, though, real quick. <laughs> you averaged 38, 8, and 8 in that series with that offense and that spacing. With no space. <laughs> with no space. With no space. It was wild. It is wild. To think back on, like I said, I have not watched that series since it happened. And to think that I damn near averaged 48 and 8 in a series with no space is – and I'm obviously – if I caught 
a good heater, I could make a couple of threes in a row, whatever the case may but be. But that wasn't yeah, that wasn't my yeah. thing. That wasn't my thing. I lived in the paint, or in the post. You didn't have your signature move then. I didn't have my signature move then. No, I was not di- my, my I was not a disciplined jump shooter at that point in time. Interesting. What do you mean by that? It, it, if I was uh, I would shoot fadeaways for no reason. I would be off balance for no reason. I would make shots more difficult for no reason. And I'd envy guys that can go straight up and down or could like shoot the same shot every time. And it was just discipline. I was so athletic that I could will myself. I, I There's like sometimes there's like old clips of me that I watch or come across my timeline on social. Yeah. Now, well, like, hey, hold on. Bro, it's okay. I see we the clip all, sometimes. No, no, no. I don't we just all, go online and look up LeBron James highlights. We all watch our own highlights on YouTube. <laughs> LeBron. I, LeBron. I'm telling you. You've never gone on YouTube? Yes, I, I have. <laughs> of course I have. I say from time to time they come through. I Of course I have. Especially, oh, by the way, the number one reason you do that is when you hit like a little slump or whatever. You're oh, like, yes. where's my game at? Where's my game at? Oh, YouTube is the perfect place <sighs> to find your game. March. 2018 at Charlotte, 27 points. <laughs> Type it in. Let me see my game. <laughs> Absolutely. We've all done it. Yeah, we've all been there for sure. We've all done it. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching Mind the Game podcast. If you like it, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you.